But um, tell me a little bit about your background because I read in your biography, you used to be a debt collector. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that was my kind of, uh, that was when I had my eureka moment and then uh, decided to, uh, that I didn't need to do what everybody else expected me to do and I could do whatever the hell I wanted. Um, because up until then, you know, I, I left school, I left school basically on a Friday and started working in a bank on the Monday and I was in the bank for maybe three or four years. I was like a square peg in a round hole in there. Uh, um, I mean, looking at banks now, it doesn't seem that bad a place to work. But, you know, in the in the in the early 80s, it was late 70s, early 80s, it was pretty shit a uh, place to have to work and uh, and everything that went with it. Um, and uh, and then I, I remember I was just desperate to do anything for a change and I took a job with this finance company and it was effectively a, a debt collector in Glasgow for a year, which was actually, it wasn't terrible, but it gave me some breathing space to decide, right, wait a minute here, I don't need to do what my parents expect me to do. You don't have, why do people do jobs that they don't like? Uh, I want to play my guitar. So <laughs> that was going to that was going to be a long way off because I was wasn't really in any position to make any money other than you know going busking or something. Um, but I was also really interested in recording. Um, at that point, you could you know they just introduced multi track recorders, four track recorders, cassette based ones, so they were affordable. You could kind of. I remember you know saving up some expenses from my job in the bank and buying a, a wee four track recorder which kind of that was when the recording bug got me and that that led to a whole load of, of other things that we'll probably come to later on but uh i uh i realized that well i can't all, all the now there are courses if you you know there's kind of like rock school and music college and you can go and learn audio engineering and stuff but you know, b back then in the early eighties, there was none of that stuff here. There were places in America. There was uh, Berkeley. There was the Guitar Institute and the Musicians Institute in in, uh, in New York. But you know, the fees were huge, and there was no way I was ever going to be able to. You know, that was just uh, that was pie in the sky. And to be honest, I probably was where I had enough musical skills or knowledge uh, to actually be able to. To take advantage of that anyway it would, it would have been a probably a, a big waste at that stage but i did find i did realize that i could um I quite fancy the idea of going to college because i'd left school and we, we our it's higher uh, school secondary education you do i think it's probably changed now <laughs> but back then <laughs> you did you did o levels when you were you know 15 and hires when you were 16 and hires were the kind of higher qualification and uh, I only got one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was an academic disaster. And, uh, and I've, I've since realized that I'm not, I'm not necessarily thick. I just wasn't interested in any of that shit, you know? And I certainly wasn't uh, responsive to that old fashioned way of teaching. Um, I got sent to quite an old fashioned school and it, it was like going back to Victorian times, you know? So uh, I thought, right, well, maybe I could go to college now uh, at the age of like 22 and, and I do something that I'm actually interested in. Because there was no music related courses, I found one uh, course in a, a, a college on the east coast of Scotland in Fife, um, which was, I initially applied to do media studies because I thought, oh, well, that's, it's not music, but it's, it's kind of, it's about as close as I can get in an academic kind of sense. Mm -hmm. And when I went for the interview, the, the, the lecturer that interviewed me said, oh, you'd be much better doing a higher national diploma in, in communication studies, which is, I think, what if you did media studies and you finished that course, you would go on to do. So I did that and that opened my eyes to kind of PR and marketing and graphic design, things that I hadn't known I was interested in or even hadn't necessarily had any, any kind of aptitude for. And... That, that was when I, I, knew I started my first band when I was at college in Kirkcaldy and uh, you should go, well, I spent all my, my grant money on a PA system so I had to go busking every day to, just so I could eat. <laughs> but it was a good experience. But it was worth the grant money. Oh, absolutely. 
Although, you know, I've, I've always been the idiot that, that kind of makes things happen while everybody else just takes advantage of it. But hey-ho. <laughs> <laughs> if, I didn't do, if I didn't do it, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. And we would, probably wouldn't be sitting here talking just now. So, you know, it, it's uh, there's there's positive things. You know, sometimes you have to, you have to bleed a little to... Uh, <laughs> to move on no pain no gain without pain that's very no true pain, no gain is it no pain no gain yeah i think that's the expression <laughs> so did you grow up playing guitar no i well my, my dad played guitar if my dad was still alive he would have been 113 last year wow. so he was quite old when i was born he was uh, 56 when I was born and my mum was quite, my mum was in her forties when I was born, which isn't actually so unusual nowadays, but back in the early sixties, that was, uh, that was quite old to have a kid, you know? Yeah. My uh, dad was uh, 50 when I was born. So yeah, really? that was 79. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So it's kind of, it's becoming more usual, I think now for people to have older parents, but, but for, you know, past, you know, back in the sixties and seventies, we were probably quite unusual <laughs> and uh, he played guitar but he kind of he just played a sort of nylon strung Spanish guitar he played I think he knew three or four chords as it was I always thought what he was doing was a pile of shit uh, and in hindsight you know he was actually pretty good but you know I was a kid he was my dad that's what happens. You don't appreciate it until it's too fucking late. So, uh, you know, um, lesson learned. But uh, he played guitar a bit. And I do remember, I, I went for fiddle violin lessons at primary school. That lasted maybe a year. I was crap at that. I didn't even get to use the bow. And the teacher, was, <laughs> the teacher oh man, Miss McCulloch, what a fucking cow she was. I absolutely hated that woman. And she hated me. Is she still Over alive? Eight years. Oh, she's probably long dead now. Oh. So, 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 some violin student will have, will have hit her over the head with a fiddle. <laughs> Stuck a bow up her ass. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, so that was, and then I, I do seem to remember in primary school, maybe aged about nine, that there was some sort of guitar class on a Friday afternoon. But I only ever seem to remember it happening once or twice, and then it, and it was just like a group of kids, all sitting round in a circle, trying to learn to play. She'll be coming round the mountain or something, you know, and just making a god awful cacophony. Uh, but I, I don't know whether the teacher didn't last or what. But th these classes only, only they were they were just a fleeting thing, so I, that didn't do anything. And then I kind of gave up on all things music, not listening to music as, as an early teenager and through my teens, I, I got into, went through all sorts of, uh, listened to all sorts of music. Um, but when I was about 18, I was working in the bank and we used to get, a, in December, we used to get, with your December wages, you got a, a Christmas bonus. Mm. And then you also got a, an extra day's holiday, a Christmas shopping day. Mm. So, the December when I think it was eight, 17 or 18. I, I might have actually only been about 17. I can't really remember. Anyway, I took my, my Christmas shopping money and I went to Bigger's Music Shop in Sucky Hall Street in Glasgow and bought a Harmony Sovereign six string acoustic guitar. And that, that was it. Of course, I went home and my parents said, that'll be under the bed in a week. <laughs> I was like, just you fucking watch. <laughs> There's nothing like telling somebody that they can't do something or they won't do something to make them do it. So maybe they were just being strategic. <laughs> that's very true. That's very, um, yeah, that's odd. It's like if somebody tells you you're not going to do something, it's like you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even if it has to be just out of spite. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, well. So uh, I, uh, within a couple of weeks, actually, I, I'd learned two chords. C and E minor, uh, so I could play the first two lines of David Bowie's Space Oddity. And I remember going busking in Glasgow City Centre and just sitting there playing, this is ground control to Major Tom, over and over and over. Because I figured I was so shit that nobody would actually stop and listen. 
So I could just I could just sing the same two lines on repeat for about an hour. And I got enough money to go to the pub around the corner and get a, a couple of pints of beer and a, and a cheeseburger. So I was quite pleased with my <laughs> with, with the spoils of my labours. <laughs> very good, sir. Very good. So, so how that's, long, a bit, that's a long answer to your short first question. <laughs> so how long did it take you then to fully play? Because you're good. You're very good. Oh. Thank you. I'm still. Well, I, I I'm I'm a bit of a one finger guitar monkey, really. But I I guess over the space of maybe the a few months, I learned basic chords, you know, open chords, and it was big bob. At that time, you know, if you were if you were wanting to play guitar, um, nowadays people probably listen to Ed Sheeran or somebody, um. But back then, uh, if you were getting into acoustic guitar, you, you 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 know people like Bob Dylan or Neil Young or Donovan, that was the kind of where you would look to for, and you, because you were playing the acoustic guitar, you kind of got into that kind of music, and I became a huge Bob Dylan fan, and so I was just learning Bob Dylan songs basically, teaching them teaching myself, and I'd maybe been playing for about six months. And there was a, a pal whose big sister played a bit of guitar and she used to go to a guitar club. But again, it was just people sitting around all trying to play the same thing. And uh, it was just awful. Um, but it, it, I, I liked the social side of it. But the, 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 the way of nobody actually learned anything. Or, it was just rubbish, really. <laughs> but anyway, she also used and her family used her, her and her mum and dad used to go to this pub uh, in an area of Glasgow called Anderson. And there's a, it's actually still there, the pub. It's called the Ben Nevis. But it was closed for a long time and it's all been redone now. But way back in the in the, in the the early to mid-80s, on a Sunday night, there, a big Irish uh, community in that part of Glasgow. And I don't know why, but they're all, they were all into country music and uh, and stuff. So the, 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 on a Sunday night in the Ben Nevis, all, a lot of the Irish community would go to this pub and in the in the lounge bar area, there were these two guys pl that playing, and one was called John Sullivan, and I can't even remember the other guy's name, but one one was a traffic cop, and he played a Telecaster and sang, and the other guy played pedal steel, and he was always absolutely pissed out his head, um, sorry, drunk pissed to you means angry, doesn't it? Over yeah. Here, pissed means dr over here drunk. we tend to use pissed as drunk. <laughs> So, so he, 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 I always had a little bit too much to drink, but he was still an amazing pedal steel player. Anyway, so uh, I, I used to go along with them and listen to this. In the first half of the, the night, they would go through their same old repertoire. And then the second half of the night, all these Irish folk, usually drunk women, would get, who fancied themselves as country singers, would get up and, and sing a song and they would try and accompany it. It very <laughs> much was a one singer, one song kind of situation. <laughs> And uh, I remember I'd only gone once or twice and then I noticed that they had a PA system, a new PA system. They used to just play through these, sing through guitar amps and stuff, I think. And I said, and the, the guitar player used to sing through this like tape echo unit. It was called a Wem copycat. It's a loop of tape on it. You still, you still find them in some retro studios and stuff, but it was basically like an echo unit. So it could, even if you couldn't sing it, it made you sound like, like you could sing a wee bit at least. It was like singing in the bathroom, you know. <laughs> and, uh, or in the stairwell in a tenement closed season, so we, we could you know, yodel away because it, it sounded immense with all that reverb on it and uh, I said to him what, what, happened to you, what happened to your old uh, copycat echo machine he said ah we don't need it anymore and I said can I buy it I said oh so you play and I said well I'll learn I said right next week get up and play a song and you can have it so I was like okay fuck me I'll I'll do that. So the next week I went along, I stood up, uh, second half I was first person up uh, and he gave me his guitar. I'd never played, never touched an electric guitar before, let alone played one. So I, but I'd got blown in the wind pretty much together. So I put on this electric guitar, <laughs> screeched my way through blown in the wind. Uh, I remember the pedal steel guy just looking at me as if to say, what the fuck is going on here? What are you doing? What are you you're playing one key, you're singing in another key, you're probably changing key halfway through. What's going on? Anyway, uh, after that, for about the next six months, every time I went, 
and then then they wanted me to do two songs every night so i was that was a good impetus because i was i was teaching myself a couple of songs every week so that i could sing them in this, <laughs> in this pub so I, I guess it took a year before, I, and then at the same time, I was going out with a girl that lived in a wee village in Lanarkshire called Law, and a uh, nearby town called Wishaw had a, a Saturday market, and it was a kind of weird place, it was, oh shit, wait a minute, my, my, my 